Welcome, Evelyn. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome to the Princess Grace Irish Library virtually. Yeah, thank you so much. And I can't wait to actually be there in person, but it's good to see it even virtually. Exactly. The books behind me are waiting on you. So that's wonderful. Now, this is really just a teaser for your September talk when you come over to complete your writer in residence uh, with the, uh, the Ireland Fund. Um, at the Princess Grace Irish Library here. It was cut short last year in March. So we'll be delighted to welcome you back in September. And this is going to be a little bit of an insight into your book that just got published last month, May. We're now in June. And so congratulations. I see it there behind you. You have it. And I'll put it up on the screen for everybody moving about the place. So you must be delighted at that. And we're going to have a little chat now about that. And then everyone will come back in September and listen to you for a reel. Okay. So if it's OK with you, I'm going to do a little introduction on your biography. And then I'll ask you a couple of questions. So Evelyn Collin is one of Ireland's most important writers. She was born in County Monaghan and lives in Dublin. She's a novelist, short story writer, essayist, and her radio essays are heard frequently on the national radio. She is the author of four novels and three collections of short stories, including uh, Telling Stories, published in China as short classics, and her other collections too. Her work is often situated in far-flung far flung places um, and have been widely anthologized and translated. Um, Evelyn is currently an adjunct professor at Carlow University, Pittsburgh, and is also a member of ASTANA. So with that introduction, welcome again, Evelyn, and I will ask you the first question, if okay with you. Your latest book is fresh off the printing press, as we just said, in, in mid-May, and you're going to have an official launch um, mid-June in Linen Hall in Belfast. So can you tell us a bit about the plan so we can watch out for that? And how do you feel about having a live launch after all this lockdown? Uh, great. Hello, Paula. That's great. And hello, everybody. Um, well, I'm not sure if it's going to be a live launch. Uh, it's definitely going to be available virtually and uh, I, I will make sure that the Linen Hall Library send you a link and then you can send it to your friends, uh, the friends of the library, because then that would mean that if they wanted to, to, to tune in, they could. Um, the plan, I think, is that the president of Linen Hall Library, the editor from Blackstaff and myself will actually be in situ in the library in Belfast and then there will be, uh, it will be virtually received by other people in Ireland and obviously by you as well. Now, that of course can all change as we know. Uh, so I wouldn't be absolutely certain. It's possible that I will be in a different room to them, but it will all still be the same from your point of view. But um, it's kind of odd. We, we, we postponed the publication of the book for a few months. And then we decided, look, we will go ahead with it in May, even though bookshops were not at that stage open. But luckily enough, they opened uh, it kind of, I got a copy in my hand on the Friday about two weeks ago and on the Monday they opened. So that was good, you know, and- Oh, fantastic timing. Yeah, and it's lovely to see, you know, to walk past a bookshop and see it in the window because uh, bookshops have been very good though during the lockdowns here you could do click and collect but then when you couldn't do that even when it got very severe for a few months after January but they still posted you know and you could you could so they've been working really hard but for them it's also terrific for readers uh, uh, and the occasional writer to come in because it, it yeah it it's easier for them, you know, it's easier. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, there's much more of a buzz and the ambiance. Yeah. 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 And, we, and we did, your publisher sent a, a lovely photo of you uh, signing away a big pile of books. So that yeah. was a nice feeling for you. Yes. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Even though normally when you would be doing that, the people you you would be signing them for individual people and they would be there. And that's a kind of a special moment. But that wasn't going to be the case. The people were going to come in afterwards. But nevertheless, yeah. you still, I still felt, look, I'm signing and that's that's a really important thing. I'm signing them for them. So that's important. Yeah, exactly. We'll we'll get there to, for your next book. We'll get to that stage. <laughs> So uh, next question, your, your new collection of 11 stories brings together the best of your work. And I'm, I'm quoting your, your publisher here from the last 10 years and a number of new stories, including a novella length story. And as described by your publisher, Blackstaff, it's brilliantly observed, witty and full of hard won truths. This collection shows how borders, movement, and history can change and transform people's lives. Uh, which it really, for what I've read, it, it exactly describes it. Uh, the title, Moving About the Place, is appropriate, in my opinion. And obviously, to your, your, your publisher, each story has a different location. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the inspiration behind the title and the overall collection? Um, you see, I was working, while I was working on the last novel, I was also working on some short stories. And it's not until you have a collection ready. I wasn't working towards a collection, but when it was ready, it became very clear to the editor, clearer than to me, that there was a huge amount of, of the stories were about mobility and people moving from one place to the other. And... Uh, uh, in a way, we left out six stories, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so so a lot of these ones are very specifically about the notion of people moving from one place to the other. The first one begins the meaning of missing, which is about the person who never moves from home, and who sort of feels that she's really missing something, and maybe in a way a little bit resents the people who can move. Um, and then there's another story called The Lie of the Land in which, because this young couple tell a lie at some point, it then follows them and they have to keep moving away more than they might have wanted to move. But uh, Disturbing Words is about borders. Uh, Imagine Them is about the Irish woman who went to Australia in the and fought for votes for women. Um, uh, Dear You is about the Irish woman who tried to shoot Mussolini. And then there are other various other ones, again, with, with a lot of movement in them. Uh, in many ways, you know, it's the thing about a short story is you work on it and you can leave it aside. It's not like the working on a novel. You can leave it aside a bit. And maybe those are my concerns. And maybe that's how the the collection came together because subconsciously those are the things that interest me. They're my concerns and they also interest me. Right. Uh, so that's, I suppose, how it came about. So and the title just came. The title, the titles always just come eventually. One morning. That's that's great. <laughs> so you're a morning person. And you work away on them in your head. And then one <laughs> ah, that's it. Got it. That's wonderful. So there's a lot of you in those stories. And it's fantastic. And I really love that story of, of the lie that kept influenced yeah. the couple's lives. I thought that was intriguing. So we'll see what everyone else thinks. OK, so next one. My, uh, I, I really loved the, these stories and I haven't quite finished the book uh, and I'm so enjoying it. I don't want to end but there are several stories in each story and you, you bring us on this path and twists and turns and, and you, you divert your reader to another story and it intermingles with the, it. The, this, but the red thread is there and it keeps the, the reader on track and interested. How, how do you formulate that? It, it's such a complex and yet an easy flowing story. Uh, <laughs> Tell us your secret. <laughs> that's a lovely word. The red thread. That's a lovely notion, the notion of the thread. 
Uh, the red thread presumably is the one that you can be seen clearer than everything else, I presume. That's, that's yeah. a great, uh, that's good. Uh, oh, I like that. I, like that. Um, I think in a way, when you're working on a story, uh, you can't bore the reader for even a second in a short story. I've said this before. Um, in a novel, you can bore yourself and the reader briefly for a few seconds or a minute. But in a short story, everything has to be absolutely move from one thing to the other. So the work in a short story is about getting those threads. And you make your mind up what you're putting in the story. And then a lot of it goes and it's edited out uh, so that you can keep that flow going quite tightly. Somebody said one time, assemble the ambulances, something is going to happen. And that's, that's the great. Show story. Assemb you know, there's, something's going to happen. And in a way, something happens in a story, but like life, several other things are going on at the same time. And that's, that's right. the bit about short stories that I rather like. Uh, it's, it's, it's the notion that you have to hone the thing down that your reader is with you to, to look at what is going to happen. The reader is there with you to, to find out what it is. And, and, and quite often what happens is that something goes into the head of the reader. There isn't an event that happens, but some one thing occurs. And as a result of that, you, the reader, hopefully, will engage with what the writer was saying and, and something will happen in your mind rather than necessarily anywhere else yeah you know that's brilliant so. I love the answer the explanation to that <laughs> and it will be nice to hold that in my mind yeah. as I read on to the the last uh, story that I haven't finished off yet well you see the thing is that it's better that you leave that one I'm dying to go to Monaco and 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 be told by people there what that what the story is about ah there you go <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a very good idea, Evelyn. We'll we'll turn the tables on, on the library and we'll we'll get them to answer the questions. Exactly. You start asking them. The, the, the last the last one is a novella, and then but the two before that one is the reading of it, which is about an older man and somebody presuming things about him. Okay, so that's that's a little bit of a motif, and then there's the one set in Monaco, which I think in a way goes very well with the reading of it. But it would have been a different story if I hadn't been with you and then had to leave. Ah. I know it would have been a different story. Now, I haven't brought anything about that into it, but I know in my heart that there is something different about that story. And I mean, maybe I will revisit in some other way because uh, uh, I've left that possibility. I've left that possibility open for myself. Oh, so, very I'm good. Glad in the book. I'm glad yeah. it's in there. Uh, yeah. I wanted it in this book uh, because I was working on it towards the end. And I would, I would have preferred to leave some of the other ones out and have that one in it. So. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And when you come in September, you're going to read this, this I will be up in the library. Great. Yeah. Good, yeah. we'd love to look forward to. Um, so uh, I was going to mention one or two of the um, reviews that you got because, I mean, the, the, the page, you probably can't see it there, uh, Friends of the Library, but there's so many reviews there, all excellent. And uh, so I was going to read out one of them anyway to finish this off and... Uh, We'll ask the rest of our questions, dear, when you're here in person. But Joseph Patante, who's an American poet, and he wrote, so wise and elegant, so immaculate and direct, sentence after sentence. Uh, Beautiful review. You must be very proud. Well, Evelyn, uh, thank you. Thank this you. is supposed to be only a teaser, so I'm not going to let you say too much more. Okay. okay. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you in September. And I really look forward to seeing you. I really look forward to seeing you in September. Yeah. 
Thanks for joining us today. And we will watch out for your launch uh, on the 16th of June. Okay. Take care. Good luck. Take it then. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.